So in this video we move to talking about the hot topic of volcanoes and we'll be talking a little about the processes that um, create them as well as we see volcanoes distributed across the earth and the different types of volcanoes as we see this example behind in our opening slide here this eruption on Hawaii but we'll be talking about how Hawaii is quite a different volcano or type of volcano than other types such as the, the volcanoes we see in the Cascade Mountains uh, for example. So. Uh, but to get us in the mood for talking about different types of volcanoes, our song choice for this video is Pompeii, a famous mountain in Italy uh, and in the Mediterranean Sea by the band Bastille. So we kind of left off talking about tectonic plates and talking about uh, mountain building in, the, in a previous video with this slide. This is just showing different distribution of uh, volcanoes and earthquakes, I uh, mean distributions of those. Well, here's a different map showing specifically just uh, where we have different uh, volcanic settings, as so all different types of volcanoes. Um, and so we see, um, again, we talked about mid-ocean ridges already and kind of how those create their own type of uh, underwater mountain ranges, almost that are kind of volcanic in nature. We have other types of, uh, you know, we have the Cascade Mountains up here, and we talk about other forms of volcanoes, uh, along with, again, the Hawaiian Islands uh, and other examples here as we go through this video. And so to talk about, to have, just give us some terminology so we can be talking about, and we all be on the same page when we're talking about volcanoes. So we have a definition of volcano here, as well as other main uh, definitions that are really important to when we often look at volcanoes, things like crater, uh, the geothermal energy that's created beneath uh, oftentimes volcanoes, lava, magma, um, and you know, pyroclastics or tephra, all these uh, different um, and components to volcanoes. There's a lot of different terminology kind of flying around um, here around volcanoes. Um, so just to give us some uh, basics here, you can, you can read through this on your own and the slides that go along with this. But just to give us some terminology and when we're specifically when we're talking about hazards tied to volcanoes, so oftentimes when we're interest in, interested in volcanoes and kind of why they're so important, oftentimes the, the topic of discussion turns to the various hazards associated with volcanoes. So things like pyroclastic flow, uh, airfall, tephra, also what are called volcanic bombs, so basically literally, literally airborne rocks that are getting ejected out of volcanoes, uh, lava flows, and other volatile gases um, that would be quite toxic to our breathing in uh, if you're exposed to them. Um, and these are so these are primary volcanic hazards in the sense that they are uh, immediately emitted by the volcano itself compared to secondary volcanic hazards which essentially are kind of repercussion or consequences of or created by in turn sense of the volcano. So this is things like what we term lahars, so essentially kind of landslides and um, that are mixtures of the, that pyroclastic material that's emitted by volcanoes to kind of mix together with mud, rocks, um, and kind of all churned up together. Uh, other tsunami as well as a big one we'll cover, um, especially when we talk about earthquakes in a separate video. Also, uh, kind of this then creating a whole set of secondary and even tertiary or third level you know, cascading effects in th terms of things like crop damage, uh, infrastructure damage, famine, uh, and, and other issues that can come up about because of these factors. So we'll be covering some of these examples so we can see just one example to the right here on this lahar, uh, again the kind of this whole mixture of mud and slurry that kind of comes down and can be mixed in um, bury places and infrastructure for example. But um, so again those are all hazards associated with our volcanoes um, uh, but sometimes the conversation is not all negative or is not all uh, worried about the hazards of volcanoes as there are or there can be termed to be benefits as well uh, living around volcanic areas. So again, the, the generation of geothermal power um, kind of tied to um, the energy that is being emitted around volcanoes as well as kind of new land uh, can be very fertile for crops when it's created uh, around some of these volcanic areas as well. And there's a whole range of different types of volcanoes as they're expressed. Um, so we, as we see here uh, from this diagram from the U.S. Geological Survey, um, kind of the idea being here that um, we get, um, as you move from top to bottom, as you know on the left-hand side, it's, it notes as increasing violence or increasing viscosity. And so essentially what we're saying here is the kind of the increasing eruptivity or kind of the explosivity, how much a volcano explodes when it uh, erupts, um, is increases as we move from top to bottom here. 
Um, and so we'll talk about many of these different types uh, of volcanoes here, or at least in brief throughout this video. And it gives us some examples here across uh, the United States, specifically um, where you might find these uh, examples and go look up and learn more about these types of volcanoes uh, beyond what we cover in this video. Um, because there really this ties back to, in the prior video, talking about plate tectonics, where we see at different uh, plate boundaries, of, at most often times, although not always, as we'll see with the hotspots, um, but different types of tectonic settings of volcan volcanism. So rifting, where we see rift valleys, or we see plates kind of splitting apart, uh, but also um, where we see subduction or plates coming together. Um, and we'll talk about those, but also we'll talk about hotspot volcanoes where we may have, um, you know, this volcan volcanism um, that is located within the middle of tectonic plates. So we'll go through different types of examples of these in turn. So again, where we have a divergent plate boundary, our, our plates are breaking up, where we have one plate breaking apart, or we have two plates kind of moving away from each other and, and, and exposing more magma to rise within the Earth's crust up to the, up to the Earth's surface. We can get a, a series of different types of volcanism. So again, if we have this on land, uh, landform produced, we have this rift valley, and this create, also creates places where we can have volcanoes uh, that are coming up in, into the surface. And so we see this in one example to the right here, uh, the example from the uh, Great Rift Valley uh, across parts of Eastern Africa. So this is showing just example from the, the country of Kenya, but also you know, kind of spread across there. A series of volcanoes, also lakes, uh, that kind of form as that uh, landscape is rifting apart, kind of creating depressions where water can settle. Um, but also, we've looked at the same type of uh, expression in terms of mid-ocean ridges underneath the water, you know, and ocean ridges as well. So again, that's where our plates are rifting apart, but also, you know, in a separate whole sense, we want to again, keep this separate from our uh, from our plate boundaries, but where we can actually have also volcanism in the middle of plates, or, or just somewhere not associated with any uh, specific plate boundaries, um, much like the, uh, or excuse me, unlike I should say, really the other examples we'll be looking at through in this video. So, hotspots kind of give us that terminology in that we can have a location, essentially where this hot rock or magma is persistently flowing upwards uh, from the mantle, and then again that more molten layer that is underneath uh, further deep down within this earth, and this triggers also volcanic activity. So essentially the idea here is that that upward plume, as we call it, that mantle plume that is emitting magma up to the Earth's surface, remains fixed in place. But once again, the with our uh, our plates, with our uh, you know the movement of our plates over top there, um, actually uh, move up over time, and so we get uh, an example like Hawaii, where we get this whole chain of islands actually within the Pacific Ocean. Um, where, where again, we have our topographic plates, or excuse me, our uh, lithospheric plates, excuse me, um, that are moving across. And, um, you know, we can see with, as I've shown this arrow here, you know, here's our present extent, essentially where most of our Hawaiian islands are. But as you move further and you go back millions and millions, hundreds of millions of years, uh, to, you know, tens of millions to hundreds of millions of years, even um, tracking this whole way, we can see actually this whole um, expression of Hawaiian islands in a sense that um, have been created as um, you know, essentially the, these, the Pacific plate moved over this hot spot over time. We can see kind of this whole line here and actually then at some point we had a shift as well in plate direction. Um, but really where we see all of these to note that most of these now um, pretty much have been worn down over time by erosion and we'll get to erosion in a future lecture. Um, you know how this wearing the landscape down but essentially you know why we only see a whole series of islands closest to the present day hot spot um, as, as, we, as it would be expressed here, is really because over time, uh, you know, in initial sense, the, those uh, land is built up, but then is worn down over long periods of time, again, millions of years, until where you know, essentially there's no exposed um, land anymore over, over those water areas because it's been worn down by various uh, weathering and erosion processes. And this also is a good image just to talk, to show more generally. Again, this is showing our bathymetry, of course, as we talked about in a, in the prior um, image or excuse me, prior le lecture video of tectonic plates. And talking about here, also you can see this expression very much of a deep ocean trench that runs here, very much along here, and also up into the Aleutian Islands, for example, uh, the Japanese Islands, uh, Japan, uh, the Islands of Japan over here, for example very deep ocean trench uh, due to the Pacific Ocean plate and its abduction under various other plates that are kind of around it as well. 
So again, in terms of focusing still on our hotspots a little bit longer, um, and kind of the types of eruptions and kind of tied to this, you know, the, what we're seeing in the example of Hawaii, where we see essentially uh, this example of Kilauea and kind of the, being the longest eruption, at least in recorded history that we kind of know of, um, erupting since the 1980s to present, um, and a series of other eruptions and, and that have been measured there or that were observed in the past. Um, and really, this is, you know, a kind of constant ongoing low scale eruption. And because really where we have these oceanic hotspots, oftentimes the lava flow out of these hotspots are what we term effusive. And so meaning that, um, you know, they're not only frequently and always erupting, but really because there's little buildup of pressure over time, it's kind of always emitting this low amount of magma or lava once it hits the Earth's surface. Um, we're getting this kind of low, low uh, pressure, kind of nonviolent in terms of effusive, kind of just outpouring of uh, this lava onto the Earth's surface, as it's shown by an example here. Probably something you're familiar with. I've seen pictures or videos of outpouring. Um, but it's not the very large, explosive type of eruptions as we'll come to look at uh, that we often get in the Cascade Mountains. So, just to wrap up here on our hotspots, just another example, um, kind of a diagram here showing different uh, terminologies. Um, I'm not going to want don't need you to memorize all of these or focus too much on these just to show the more technical. Um, uh, definitions here, but also just to note uh, a few main points that I want to emphasize where um, particularly with are these um, hot oceanic hotspots, they create what are termed as shield volcanoes. Um, and really those are in really those can be defined or kind of are notable in the sense that how they build up a series of layers, again, uh, kind of layering by those effusive eruptions that are keeping occurring over time, but also create, um, because of that, quite low angle slopes. We're going to have this very low, gentle sloping of these lar very large mountains compared to kind of the more uh, pointed types of uh, peaks that we get with other types of more uh, eruptive vulc volcanism that we'll come to see. So just to bring us back here, kind of look at a broader scale and our different types of plate boundaries where you see these different types of volcanisms. We've talked about kind of the continental rift zone over here, um, but we, and we've talked about kind of a hotspot uh, having that example of our shield volcano here. We'll also be talking about uh, as well of our convergent boundaries, both in terms of two oceanic boundaries coming together as well as our, uh, o, you know, kind of oceanic meeting continental crust and those different uh, volcanoes that are created because of that. So some different types of examples that we start to see with that. Um, we have cinder volca cone volcanoes. So these are smaller kind of conical hills, uh, oftentimes kind of one of the more classic ideas of what a vol volcano looks like. Um, and, you know, these are really coming out of or formed by cinders accumulating during kind of relatively smaller or moderately explosive uh, eruptions. And uh, we have examples of this across Oregon. Uh, so if you go to central Oregon, you go to Lava Butte as shown by this image here uh, as part of Newberry National Volcanic Monument uh, near Bend. You can go and actually drive up to the top of this uh, for example here. Um, but also um, we have much the largest uh, one of the largest types, um, actually shield looking is uh, in terms of the full volume and size are usually the largest, but um, kind of the next largest are, are also quite large um, are these calderas. So these are I mean, large basin shaped uh, depressions that are f that really form in full in terms of the size or the shape of them based on uh, a large eruption that kind of collapses part of the volcano um, into the, you know, essentially it emits so much magma or, or lava, again, once it hits the Earth's surface, that it personally empties uh, that magma chamber underneath the ground, kind of the weight overlying uh, of the ground kind of can't be supported anymore, and it collapses in on itself. And so Crater Lake is actually a great example of this. So again, another Oregon example uh, formed uh, several thousand years ago by the collapse of Mount Mazama, basically on itself when it, with a big eruption. Um, and so really there's subsequent minor volcanism uh, and landscape modification. You go there, you know, Wizard Island, for example, it's being formed and a little bit, uh, some subsequent minor volcanism. Um, but right now, not uh, a very large eruption expected again, generally with this, um, as we, um, with the several thousand years ago eruption there. Another type of volcano, uh, and one of the most common, especially and if we're thinking about the Cascade Mountains, being a composite volcano. So this, um, again, now we're convergent, forming at convergent plate boundaries. And when we're having that partial melting of subducted oceanic crust and mixing that type of 
rock with that overlying continental crust. Remember, those are two different types of rock types. When they can then they kind of mix together, we get that uh, silica-rich, high viscosity magma kind of trapped in, and being uh, melted and kind of bubbling up and uh, being emitted. Um, kind of that mixing in terms of the viscosities of that uh, are what actually lead to very explosive eruptions. So this is why we uh, have quite uh, explosive eruptions in the types of volcanics our volcanoes that we have in the Cascade Mountains. So again, uh, just a diagram here showing all the different terminologies around these. Again, I'm not so much going to be interested in that, but knowing composite volcanoes are you know have these oftentimes most explosive types of eruptions because of uh, where they're formed, how they're formed, uh, is much more important here. Um, and again, just talking around the, this, you know, an example, great example, Mount St. Helens eruptions in 1980. Uh, Mount Rainier has erupted in really human or at least um, time scales of euro-american settlement within uh, the western united states um, but you know really there's a lot of interest around uh, many of these uh, cascade mountains like mount rainier and mapping out hazards so there's this map on the right here showing uh, if there's you know, if there's a big Mount Rainier eruption, where would we have pyroclastic flows? Where would we have lahars? You know, who would be in danger essentially uh, in these in these places, and who you know, who would be most at risk and at hazard uh, being affected? So you know, that's a really an important you know, ongoing mapping and kind of understanding of volcanoes in the Cascades and really across different places of the United States. Um, the U.S. Geological Survey is kind of the main. Um, uh, government agency, federal government agency, leading that uh, in terms of the science of, of understanding our volcanoes. And so we have the Cascade Volcano Observatory kind of branch within the Pacific Northwest here. Um, and so I have their link here, and you can always go and learn more about what they're doing and what's going on in kind of the cutting edge and kind of leading edge of uh, volcano science within the Cascades, but also just, again, more generally uh, helping us understand some of the basics that we've covered here uh, and going further beyond that in, in this very basic video. And you can always go and find more from their website there.